Hello, welcome to the channel and uh, Beast Grave is nearly done and dusted. So um, let's uh, fondly look back and um, in a little mini series of videos we're doing where we talk about the end of Beast Grave, how it's been and what we could probably expect going into Dire Chasm. Um, but uh, let's start off with um, my top five warbands. From the off, this is not a tier list. I'm not going to be telling you which are the best warbands to play, which ones are the strongest. Um, this is a very kind of this is a very personal, opinionated list. Um, the these are my five favourite warbands that I've enjoyed playing the most over the Beast Grave season. Um, not necessarily the ones that are going to curb stomp your opponents into dust, um, but ones that I've had fun playing with. Uh, first of all, an honourable mention. Um, if Arena Mortis had come out a little bit earlier, I'd imagine I probably would have played Skaven a lot more. Um, I've been playing around with Skaven and combo weapons um, after seeing um, Jan uh, play with uh, the play around with that type of thing, and it's very fun. Um, the Arena Mortis has those Arena Mortis cards work absolute wonders um, with the Skaven. Uh, so um, do check that out, but uh, not enough time for them to make the top five. But the list proper, uh, coming in at number five, Molog. Uh, if my previous uh, video, I was discussing how um, I'm kind of enjoying playing Molog again. Uh, the last kind of month or so, Molog has been my kind of main dude, the big sleepy troll that everyone loves to hate. Um, I like that kind of smash and style that he has. The kind of that this current wave of the Vulture on Meta as well um, puts him in a really good stead. I like the fact that you can play. Molog in a tournament and your brain isn't too much like it can be with some of the big hoarder ones. Um, I like one-shotting people. Um, I understand why people dislike Molog, but um, Molog is uh, number five in the list. Won't go into it too much, really, as I've done a previous video on him, which I'll pop up there for you to watch. Number four, another... Um, Night Vault Warband uh, sticking with the uh, Destruction family um, going in with Zarbag's Gits uh, these guys are very much different type of play style lots of squishy guys um, very much objective grabbing um, they've been in a really good place kind of all the way through um, the kind of Beast Grave season thanks to the introduction of those kind of score immediately objective grabbing cards. Um, you can do all sorts of um, funky tricks with them. Uh, their sheer numbers can overwhelm other warbands. Um, the fairly overpowered amber bow weapons work quite nicely for them as well. And um, yeah, gobbos, squigs, what's not to love about a warband like that? But um, I've, re I've really enjoyed playing them. They're going to take a massive hit um, with Night Vault cards and boards rolling out. The Gobbo board in particular um, is going to be gone. So a lot of their... While they're, I think they may still be quite strong, they might not be kind of overpowered on that particular board. But uh, I'm very intrigued to see how Zarbag's gits are going to fare kind of going forward. As, like I said, a lot of their kind of big powerful cards are probably rotating out this time around. So we're going to look forward to doing some deck building there. But um, yeah, in a number four, uh, Zarbag's Gits. Number three, the first Beast Grave Warband in, the, in my uh, top five for the season so far. Um, Daughters of Cain. Um, I... All season was looking forward to Morgok's crushes, and then the cards got announced, and I was really excited about them. It looked like, yeah, these are going to be like straight up aggro. I'm going to really enjoy this. Um, but it turned out, out of the two, the Daughters of Cain are much more fun. 
Um, you can, I like the kind of glass cannon um, aspect of them, um, kind of go hard or go home type of thing. They've got three, I think three of the best kind of individual fighters um, in there. Uh, Morgoth, the leader, uh, can be a murder machine. Um, you've got the, the big snake lady with her cleaver in snare shot from a distance. And then you've got Kamis and her insane combo. Um, you know, what I initially looked at them and thought, oh, these, are, these look a bit rubbish. But then once you kind of get involved in deck building for them and playing a game, they're, they're fun. They're a really fun list. Um, are they gonna, are they top tier? In the right hands, they're, they're a handful. But I think the way the kind of meta's shifted at the minute and they're, they started off in quite a good place because Horde... Uh, Warbands were quite popular, but then that kind of objective hoardy has disappeared, and the kind of Voltron Mega Boss Elite Warbands come in, and the it's kind of whoop, leapfrogged over the top of um, the Daughters of Cain, and um, they're kind of you know they haven't they've done any better out of it, but I don't think they've really done any worse out of it. Uh, but uh, great models, really fun to play. Um, an interesting play style. They're, they're like a puzzle um, that you have to kind of do when putting the deck together. And um, yeah, they came in at number three for me. Number two, the Godsworn Hunt. Now, if this time last year, somebody had told me that I would be a massive Godsworn fan, I would have punched him in the face. I <laughs> I, I have no time for the Godsworn hunt. Um, and I think the kind of reasoning for it was I just, I didn't get it. I didn't get them at all. And it wasn't until I played them in the my first Vassal League that um, I got it. I, they're fun. They're full on aggro which is the type of style that i like to play um similar to the daughters of Cain, they're a bit of a puzzle they've got that really cool mechanic of the um the oath objectives which can add it a nice kind of little bit of flavor um they've got a great range of models they've got a spell caster if you want to cast spells the only kind of downside to them is it is that it's, they are pure aggro. Um, if you want to do well with them, you have to have the right card draw. You have to have hot dice and a, and a little bit of luck in there as well. But they're one of my favourite warbands now. <laughs> and um, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing if the Godsworn can hang um, when Diachasm comes around. In at number one. Um, it is a Beast Grave Warband, and my favourite warbands, kind of that I to play with this season. Um, although I haven't played with them much recently, um, it is Rippers. Um, I personally think these are possibly like the most kind of complete warband. Um, kind of strong aggro, flex, and control possibilities with them. Um, they've got speed. They've got aggression. They're They've got kind of they've got range, they've got scythe attacks, they've got great um pool of cards uh, to be able to use and to kind of maximize um the effectiveness of them. Um they've kind of been one of those war bands that ever since released they've just kind of bubbled away at the top. And they came out with the Grimwatch, I think. So around that time, they were overshadowed by the Grimwatch for quite a long while. And um, the Grimwatch, I think we can all agree, were probably a bit overpowered with some of their cards. That got addressed. Rippers were still bubbling away at the top. They're a great counter for a lot of things. Um, the models are great. They're gobos on wolves. What's not to like about those? Um, I can see them being strong for quite a long time. 
Um, people have won big tournaments with them. Uh, most recently, the Canadian Grand Clash. And I'm pretty certain they can, kept popping up every now and then, um, if not winning, being quite high at tournaments. Uh, but um, it's a travesty I've not managed to paint mine yet, but I think I'm going to be. Um, as I think it's only fitting. And uh, I think they might be one of the um, Beast Grave Warbands that I kind of keep playing into Diachasm, as I have decided to limit my use of the older Warbands. Um, but, yeah, Rippers, I think, uh, have been my favourite Warbands over the whole thing, really. But, um, yeah, just a kind of really short video. Um, but I'm really keen to hear what everyone else's are what you've enjoyed playing the most, um, what have you been disappointed by? Uh, so as, as well as those five that I've really enjoyed, um, I've probably been disappointed with Crushers the most. I might have set those expectations a bit too high personally for what I was expecting from them, but they've just not quite ticked the right boxes there for me. But um, Molog, Zarbag, Daughters of Cain, Godsworn and the winners, Rippers and the Starfangs. Let me know what you've been enjoying in the comments. Um, there's going to be a, a few more of these videos. The next one that I'm going to do um, be chatting about those those Night Vault cards that we're going to miss the most. But um, thanks for watching and uh, hopefully see you real soon. Bye.